Salutations to foes. This is your fabulous leader, the Queen of Shade, coming at you with a special presentation. I am moving forward with um, these conversations. I call them interviews, but they're conversations um, with people that inspire me and that I inspire them and also people that I've met on social media. We, kind of, we look out for each other. And having said that, I have someone that you probably know that I probably don't have to introduce to you, but that I feel you should meet on my platform. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Conscious Lee. <laughs> hey, that was, hey, you weren't playing no games. <laughs> no, I'm not playing any games. I'm not playing any games. No, I love this. This is like a new thing for me. I never um, thought to actually speak to people in kind of a conversation kind of way. And I've been doing it and it's going really well. And I've had people like yourself and, you know, you got all of these major people around the world that watch you and you guys are lending your support to me. So I'm grateful. Before I start, I have to tell you that you're my hero. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to tell you that. You're my hero. I have many heroes, but you're my hero. I love educated, you know, outspoken, factual. Like that, those three things about you are so amazing. You don't just speak to speak, you speak with fact. And I love that. And we know your, your main um, word is research over research. So. Yeah, so we're gonna do we're gonna do it a easy way. So here we go. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from I'm from uh, Bryan, Texas. Born really? and raised in Bryan, Texas. Yeah. Oh my God, are you still there? No, nah, I'm in Oklahoma now. I live in Oklahoma. Born and raised in Bryan, Texas. Graduated from uh, Bryan High School, uh, from a small country town. So the town that oh, at the time I graduated, I only had one high school. Um, and then pretty much been living in Oklahoma since 2009. I graduated high school. Wow. And you went to college there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went to college here and work here now uh, at University of Oklahoma. That's where I got all my degrees from. That's what I work at currently right now. And yeah. Tell us, what are your degrees in? Come on, give it to us. Give okay, uh, my undergraduate degree is in uh, African, African-American studies. Um, I have two master degrees. I have a master's degree in human relations, and I have a master's degree in adult and higher education. God. And I got some, uh, some uh, I guess you call them graduate certificates. I have a graduate certificate in uh, human diversity development, and I have a graduate certificate in uh, women and gender studies. Yes. You know, one thing that I love about you is you are very inclusive. Everybody. Everybody, you, you, I've never seen you as long as I've been watching you and it's been quite some time. I've never seen you discriminate, never. I've seen people become uncomfortable. I've seen that, but I've never seen you discriminate, like for real, like I've never seen you discriminate. And um, I just think that that's, you know, some, some things, especially with entertainers, because you're an educator, but this, what we do on social media, education, entertainment, same thing. Yeah, same thing. Pretty yeah, much. same yeah, thing. Agree. Same thing. One of uh, one of my mentors calls me an intellectual entertainer. And I have to tell you, that's what you are. You are an intellectual entertainer. So I, like I said, I've seen you touch on all topics and do it in your own way. And no matter who got mad, no matter what they said, it was it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is, Lee. It is what it is. Tell us. So when did you realize that your particular brand or style of delivering factual evidence and education, when did you realize, oh shit, this is big now? Because I was just on your, uh, uh, I was on TikTok and it's like, you have 1.7 million followers, 50, 53 million lives. When did you realize, okay, this is serious. They want to hear from me. Oh, uh, man. I feel like, I feel like, I, I feel like I've been through like uh, everything in like phases, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, when I first got on to TikTok in 2019, um, that was, uh, I guess, a little bit after I had started taking my social media following and presence seriously. Mm -hmm. So I think that before the uh, quarantine, when everybody hopped on social media, when everybody got on TikTok, I already had like 300,000 followers. 
And I think at that time when I started realizing every time a social media, every time a, a, a trendy sensational event happened or something happened, people be waiting on me to give my response. People be waiting on me to give my take on my analysis. That's when I feel like I started to realize it was getting, like I felt like getting big. And then I think that when uh, me and my wife, we went to uh, New Orleans for my sixth, my sixth anniversary. And uh, shit, I had just got just got to New Orleans, fresh on the fresh on the on the French Quarter, and I had been there for like an hour. And within an hour, I had like five or six people that just came up to me and recognized me, noticed me from social media. And that's when I realized it was like, all right, this social media shit that got a little bit way bigger than I thought it <laughs> could ever get big. Okay, so so now we're never getting there. That is so amazing because you know. I like when you like, like this, like, I love conversations like this because, you know, people f swear that what we do, what you do is just easy. And it's like, no, you've been actually training for this for a very yeah, long time. I mean, you, yeah. yeah. You, you did debate too. Weren't you like, yeah. what was it? The cat, were you the leader of the debate? Like you do something. I was, I was, uh, I was president of the policy debate team in, in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a college, but I uh, ended up being in the uh, top 20 of the decade for a uh, college policy debate. And uh, that's pretty much really where I sparked out of my interest in a lot of the intellectual issues that I get into a lot of the ways and how I express myself. Uh, really, really just the, the range of the range of issues and topics that I know about it come for me being a college policy debater. And that's actually what I do now at the University of Oklahoma. I'm the, I run the debate team. I'm the uh, coordinator of the policy debate team. So that's pretty much what I do in, days in, days out. And that's really what a lot of folks on the internet usually, usually underestimate. They just they think I'm just some fast talking nigga with some dreadlocks that can just, you feel me, is witty and that, you know what I mean? Know a couple big words. They don't know that I really do debate. That that's like actually like one of the skills that I bet the bet the house on, you know what I'm saying? They don't know that's how I pay my bills with debate skills. They don't know that's how I made a name for myself. So I always find that to be, uh, I feel like, I always find it to be, I don't even know where to even put it, but I always find it funny, you know what I'm saying? I always find it odd that people underestimate what I do and how I do, or people have a particular perception of what I do and how it's done. And usually those things are always wrong, regardless of what they thought I was doing or regardless of what they, you know what I mean? It's, it's always something wrong where it's like, oh, I didn't know you do that. It's like, yeah, motherfucker, I do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes. There is a way. And, and that's because, you know, what's so funny. I took a debate class, just a class. I, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not on your level. And I can admit that. Um, I took a class um, in college uh, in debate. And what I liked about it was that you had to prepare for it. You had to, you know, research. That's where, is that where research over me search came from? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You portable have skills to, of research. Mm -hmm. You have to actually look up what your topic is and come up with all the pros and the cons. And, and it's, that's the yeah. thing. It's not just the pros, it's the cons too. And, you know, people, you know what people... I find that social media, I'm leaving it. Let's just say it like that. I'm but, leaving it. Yeah, yeah I'm leaving think, it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think really being real with you, I feel like all of us as content creators, the more that social media becomes intertwined in everyday lives of most people around us, we really got to figure out ways to have a healthy balance of how we consume social media and how we produce content for social media. Because I know you can really get sucked into like the, you feel me, the machine of uh, psychological manipulation. And you know what I'm saying? It's just really just being people being on bullshit. What we know is that every week, every day, something new trending. You yeah. feel me? And based off of what's trending, you will have different people that fake like they're experts of that issue, of that topic. Mm -hmm. So this week, you feel me, they international, you know what I'm saying, experts. Next week, they got them legal analysts, you feel me? And the next week, you feel me, they are, you know what I'm saying, uh, biologists, you feel me? It's like whatever the hell you want, you know what I mean, whatever they want to be. I think that us as content creators, though, we don't have a balance in how to, you know what I'm saying, do this compared to this, or, or I feel like really be able to push, push away from the algorithm. I think that they make it where a lot of us deal with the, uh, the exhaustion a lot of us deal with the burnout. A lot of us deal with the, you know what I'm saying? Really, I feel like depression. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like you really got to figure out the way to have that balance. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, I haven't posted on Instagram about four or five days. You feel me? It's about the longest, I, it's about the longest I've gone without posting. You know, like, man, a long, 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 mm -hmm. long time. 
but I'm just kind of preparing for the next year, it's 2022, making sure that how I move and what I do is a little bit more strategic, um, trying to make it where the shit that I've been doing and getting done in 2021, really trying to figure out how to take it to the next level. Um, you, as you know, we spent a lot of time on social media and we spent a lot of time producing things for social media. Yeah. So it's all about how we can make the most out of what we do on social media, especially when it comes to taking care of ourselves, paying bills, taking care yes. of loved ones, things like that. So shit, I really just been taking these last few days for the next year, really, and just coming up with a plan. And then of course I got some big announcements to, you know what I'm saying, make in 2022. Uh, almost them as soon as the year hit. So I really just been been chilling, just been chilling, waiting to see what happened, how it happened. You know what I'm saying? Doing that, but really just that balance of talking about really trying to just, you know, maintain it. Yeah, I gave social media for five and a half years. I've been in the entertainment industry for 20 years. I started as a model, 19, all young and frail. I got the opportunity to go to Paris and model at 22. And it was hard. It was hard. It was so hard. I ended up coming home, but I never lost my passion. So I actually left my heart in Paris. So like literally for the last 14 years, I have built a platform, not really trying to become famous, but trying to get back to where my first love was. And now, like you said, I have all this, like for me, I have all this content because I gave, I gave, um, you know, social media five winters, five summers, five springs, five falls, and every holiday. And what I realized, Lee, was I wasn't making any money. <laughs> I wasn't making, I just have to say it, I wasn't making any money. My, I have my New Year's resolution posted now and I'm basically breaking up with my following because I'm like, here I am, I've given you the best that I could at this level with what I had. And you guys did not support a single thing that I did financially, you know, and I had to tell them, listen, I have to go. And I had to, and, and Lee, I had to do it like this. I had to tell them, listen, most of you that are following me are this. And y'all not, y'all gawking at me. Y'all love when I say bitch at the end of my videos. That's what you're writing me about. But I have mentoring services. I have music, four albums. I have merchandise. I have all of these products and services that I offer that you guys are not patronizing. So I too, at, with the close of this year, I had to take and come up with a new way. And I, I let them know, I said, listen, I love y'all. I wanted to take you with me, but I'm going to Europe. They're already asking me. They're already calling for me. And I have to go where they're going to pay me. And I had to, yeah, I had to, and I had to tell them, I said, listen, paying customers can't get into the seats because y'all asses is in the seats. And I need y'all to get yeah. up and move. Like it, like I don't think, and, and it's so funny that we went down this road already because that's the thing. I don't think that people realize that you can make a lot of money from what we do. You can. No, nah, yeah, that's that's the part though, is that I, I know that the industry that we in is ultimately one of the most lucrative industries in human mm -hmm. history when it comes to social media. Mm -hmm. But I also know is that us as black content creators, we get in the short end of the stick when it comes to people that's monetizing a presence, when it comes to people that's able to really get a financial gain from having a virtual presence. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. What I know though is that a lot of people around us, you know what I'm saying, nine times out of ten. Shit, this social media shit new, you know what I'm saying? So they're looking like, man, what you what you doing? You wasting your time to grow up, you know what I mean? You you spend too much time on the internet, X Y Z X Y Z. So I think that they make it hard, and I feel like that's why you gotta have that balance and, and, and just recognize and you feel me what's going down, you know what I mean? In terms of what you trying to do, what everybody around you telling you, you can't do, right. you know what I mean? The the the, the energy, effort, time that it puts that, that it takes to to make it where you're trying to go. You know what I mean? I think it's just a lot of things you're trying to balance and it's just make it where social media is just a world. It's a crazy world, man. Like yeah. my Facebook just started taking off. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just started like, you know, Facebook, I didn't have no following. I only had a following on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Here recently, my Facebook been taking off and I know that Facebook is a little different. So I really don't really be on it like that. Mm -hmm. I must have, I must have screenshotted some people that was like basically talking, talking about being racist, being 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 really hateful in my in my, in my inbox. All I did was screenshot it, post it to my page, like an illustration of white fragility. Yeah. One of the people, you feel me, that 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 was in the screenshot must have seen it, got pissed off that I replied to him and reported the post for bullying and harassment. 
Now, I remind you the person in the, in the, in the, in the, in the inbox calling me a, a weak ass pussy that's race hustling and right. doing all type. You know what I'm saying? Like really, really bullying, harassing me, right? Right. The, the the thing that came about was shit. Facebook ended up reprimanding me. But Facebook ended up putting me in Facebook jail and ended up about saying that I violated, uh, you know what I'm saying, the community guideline and not them. So just really thinking about, you know, what it means to be a content creator, how how you respond to people. You can't respond to people how they respond to you. You know what I'm saying? Whether you like it or not, whether you think it's right or not, you know what I'm saying? And then just thinking about, you know, how the social media, all these brands, all this promotion, all this advertising that's being done on there. And, and, and really recognizing that folks making money out for you. Yeah. The question is, can you make money out for you? Yeah. I find that a lot of people don't understand that with social media, we experience the same consequences of fame, just like anybody else, just like any actor, any musician, any philosopher, any, you know, orator, any speaker, like we, we have to live under the same rules because it's like, you know, they treat us that way. I, for, for long, leave for 14 years, I have had someone in Hollywood who did not like me because they saw my potential even before I saw my potential Lee, and wrote me one line on YouTube. I was on YouTube doing covers back in 08, singing everything, Whitney, Mariah, Tony Braxton, Anita Baker. I'm singing. That's what I, that's what I do. After the yeah. modeling, I was like, I, I can sing. I'm a, I'm a male, but I'm a, I'm a mezzo soprano. So I'm like, I'm just doing that wrote me a line it said and I'll never forget it because I looked up to the person I love everything about you and then after that line a 14 year hate campaign was launched against me I have yeah. I have literally had links in my bio where you could buy things from me that all of a sudden stopped working and the crazy thing was Instagram was telling me oh you can't put this particular link in your bio section. And I'm like, it's a link tree. And I would go to other pages. Everybody has a link tree, but mine was reported. And I've had to yeah. deal with, yeah, I've had to deal with so much. Sabotage. And yeah, sabotage. And, but you know, it made me stronger because you and me both, we do what we do. We're going to do that it no matter what. Yeah. It yeah. It but it, but it does become cumbersome and annoying when you have to constantly deal with it. Everybody else is out here saying what they want to say, but when a black man such as yourself, a black man such as myself gets on there and says something, all of a sudden we ruffle in feathers. And it's just like... No, nah, it's not, but, but, but I, I think that the most thing that's alarming about social media proliferating and being mm -hmm. more infused into our everyday lives mm -hmm. is recognizing that a lot of the ways that violation the community guidelines and community standards and policies operate is the same way that a lot of those things operate in the quote unquote real, real world world. So the ways that black people, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, as far as us black people are disproportionately impacted by community guidelines and by mm -hmm. violations and by policies. That's the thing that alarms me is that we create a virtual world that just mirrors and reflects a lot of the ways that black people are just fucked over in the real world. You see what I'm saying? It's like right now, the people, the, the two people that reported me to Facebook, these motherfuckers had the, you know what I'm saying, the gall to slide in my DMs and let me know, you dumb nigger, I'm you dumb nigger, you 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 unfactual motherfucker, Facebook sided with me, you dumb nigger. I'm gonna take your platform down, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. So it was like almost in my mind, it's like shit. In my mind, I feel like this is probably how black folks felt in like the 60s. So you know what I'm saying? Civil rights time. You feel me? Or yeah. Jim Crow. Yeah. You feel me? White post or white person can tell me I'm a nigga to my face. You know what I'm saying? Be dehumanizing, be demeaning as much yeah. as they want to. And you feel me? And shit, when I respond, I gotta respond with a certain type of respectability, or I'm gonna be the one that have, you know what I'm saying, consequence repercussions face to me. Yeah. regardless of what I'm reacting to or how I'm reacting. It's like, you better make sure you act right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's the part that was, I feel like frustrated, but I think that it is what it is, man. I think it is what it is. We know that the anti-Black world we live in, social media is not immune from the anti-Blackness that the world is structured by. Shit, a lot of the anti-Blackness structured the internet 
And it's just like shit, really trying to get in where we can fit in and then recognizing like me and you start off the conversation when we talk what we're talking about, but we know that our white counterparts, yeah, and in some instances, just our non-black counterparts, yep. they making 20 times the amount. Like no exaggeration yep. either. It's like literally what you make, oh, you make 10,000 this, oh shit, they yep. made two hundred thousand. It made yep. two hundred thousand. You yep. made 10, they made a hundred thousand. You made it's like it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's really just being able to think about, okay, these disparities is crazy. What I'm gonna do yep. about it. You feel yeah. me? And that's really what I've been sitting behind thinking about. Thinking about just next year, 2022. You feel me? What Fat Joe say, yesterday's number, yesterday's price is not today's price. Yep. Shit, you and I know on for social yeah. media, yesterday's following is not today's mm-hmm. following. Last hour's following is not mm-hmm. this hour's following. Yeah. So just trying to make sure that you are also evolving and transcending with the numbers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't just be, you feel me? You you got goddamn a quarter million followers and you still yeah. operating as if you got 25,000. Yeah, you know what I mean, you really got to be able to evolve with the following. And I, I think that sometimes, you know, what I mean, not having a clear vision for how that for how that happens to make it very hard to do it. You know, you know, what's so funny? I always believe this. There is no degree you can get in the entertainment industry. You can go to school for business. You can go to school for engineering. You can go to school for a lot of things, but <laughs> but you can't. There is no degree you can get like people literally our 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 ancestors, not just our ancestors, but our counterparts that are older that came before us. They were the first. So they literally had to do it however they did it. And then they created a blueprint and then we follow their bru- their blueprint. You know, we look at what they did and say, okay, well, maybe I'm gonna try this and try that. And like you said, because of the difference and and the fact that racism is being mirrored in the real life and on in social media, we get shut down. I remember I was laying in my bed um, before I, I said I announced that I was coming off of Instagram, and I was just tired of it. I have acute anxiety disorder, so I was just like, I'm tired of the anxiety. I'm I'm tired of the stress. Lee, I started to delete all my content. I have a website I've had for nine, 10 years, not using it. I said, you know what? I need to funnel everything through my website. Lee, I started deleting my posts. I have 43,000 posts. So I start deleting. I got to 3,000. Do you know Instagram blocked me and said that me deleting my post was against community guidelines? I continue. They're, They're making money. They're making money. Yeah, that surprised me. Yeah, so then get this. You know how our iPhones have uh, facial recognition. So I continue, even though I'm blocked, I'm still deleting. I'm still deleting. An interface pops up in Instagram. Tilt your head up. Tilt your head down. Tilt your head left. Tilt your head right. Press send. They wanted my face to be sure it was me deleting my content. I've talked to people and no, nobody has heard that they were doing that. Yeah, I mean, to me, it makes sense though. To me, I feel like I'm like 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 me being in the in the metaverse. So I'm in the metaverse and understanding yeah. virtual reality. Well, I understand virtual reality and how yeah. promotion and advertising works on these on these on these on these, on these sites. It's like you deleting all that content. That's that's the literal space that Instagram sells to yeah. Apple and you know what I'm saying Samsung yeah. and you feel me this company and that corporation that corporation. That's the actual space. So you yeah. deleting that. It's like nah. Hey, this is hey, this how we this how we this how we make our money now. We we put our ads in between these videos you deleting. Yeah. So it, it's it's crazy. So tell me where um research over me search started. Research over me search starts from me being a policy debater in college and mm-hmm. me going to different like debate camps and me going to different like workshops to learn how to be a better debater, how to deal with my argumentation development, how to be able to make more historical references, stuff like that. Uh, really one of the, uh, 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 one of my homeboys, uh, Iggy, you feel me? Mm-hmm. He would always, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I forgot what he used to say. But one day, you know what I mean, he said something and I was like, yeah, research over me search. And I feel like I just, it just stuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so now I just, I just, I just, I feel like I said it when I was in undergraduate uh, debating and I ain't really, like, like before I was trying to build a social media following before I started taking the internet serious. Um, it just became something that I throw out. You feel me? I'm yeah. a country person. I'm born and raised in Bryan, Texas. You know what I'm saying? So I, I learned how to, how to, how to speak and how to, I feel like, uh, give like little little sayings and principles from the old people from old black people you feel me so you know you you'll learn how to say 
a, a, a colloquial, as some would put it, you know what I'm saying? Or some, you know what I mean? Some old, like a little saying or something, and you just repeat it and you'll figure out different ways of how to deploy it or to bring it up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, you know, reach whatever me search and start being something every time that I would talk about self-discovery or every time I would talk about, you know what I'm saying, having portable skills that you lean on some understanding outside of just your own. I started being able to say it that way. And I feel like when I got on the social media, I said it one, one time on social media and I feel like people in the comment section, yeah. like repeating it. Yeah. So I started, I feel, like, I feel like it's really how I learned a lot of marketing and branding on social media based off of what the users are telling me, you know what I'm saying? What yeah. my father was telling me. Yeah. And, and you know, what's so funny. That's, that's the truth. I've had people that were supporting me as followers, as supporters come to me and say, you need to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had that happen. And it's just like, wow, you know, <sighs> see, it's kind of funny. Cause I'm, I'm kind of just like, I'm slow at the moment because I'm just like, we're talking about the real. We're talking about the real. And it's just like this, this is near and dear to my heart because like I said, 20 years, 20 years. And for most of those years, not getting anywhere. And, you know, I have this thing and I said, I've been saying in a couple of interviews, I went to other content creators and was denied information. But I still, because, you know, nobody wants, they want you to do well, but they don't want you to do better than them. And it's unfortunate, you know, I stand for being black. I'm proud to be black. I, I embrace my heritage. I embrace my ancestors. I'm a shaman. So I you, you utilize a lot of what my ancestors went through and channeling spirit world and different things like that. So I'm very appreciative, but I find that my community does not support me. And I'm hey, hey, being real with you though, I feel like what I always tell people in interviews like this, and I'm writing a book, it's gonna be like, damn, that might, I thought like this might be a chapter. You feel me? Uh -huh. I ain't decided if it's gonna be a chapter or if it's gonna be a part of a chapter. If I just dedicate a whole chapter to this, yeah. And actually, I might, I might dedicate a whole chapter to it. I really think it's deeper than just social media, but social yeah. media is where it plays out. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing that I always tell people, and 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 if you want to be a content creator. You got to accept that your biggest hater is going to be somebody you know and your biggest supporter is going to be a stranger. If you can yes. accept that and not take it personal, you're going to be good. If you're going to take it personal that you feel me, uh, your cousin them, your auntie them, your sister them, your friends you went to high school with or college with, they're not going to share your shit. Right. They're not going to be in the comment section. Right. They're not going to like your shit either. You feel me? Right. They're only going to do that unless a thousand of people did it first. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? If you can already accept that literally your biggest supporter is going to be a stranger and your biggest hater is going to be somebody you know, you're going to be good. But if you can't accept that as a, as a, as a, as a it's like a fact and you take it personal, then I think that you're going gonna, gonna, gonna to make it where you're going to be, woe is me every time you drop a post. Woe is me, why you didn't share my shit? My own people don't support me, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. But I think that if you can just accept that, really, I feel like it's the main part that you can, I feel like, take, take this journey on. Yeah, I know that in social media, that's really what it come down to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be making it where, you know, like I know, you can yeah. spend three hours, yeah. four hours, five hours on making a video. Yeah. Yeah. You press post, that video get 10 views. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 10 views. You spend five hours making yeah. the video. Yeah. You got 10 views and five likes. Yeah. 10 views and five likes. Yeah. And, and you're five right. Five hours of your life. Right greatness putting in your putting 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 your creativity putting right. your time and effort and energy and really putting your intellectual labor on it it did not get no reviews at all like right. fuck making money it didn't even get no attention <laughs> right right <laughs> you know i learned very early to not to, to have tough skin but it just was like, like, like I said, I did a, my New Year's resolution video is 46 minutes long. And I'm telling them, listen, the Caucasians are calling for me. The Caucasians are willing to pay for me. The Caucasians want to see me in Germany, Switzerland, Lisbon, Spain, the Netherlands. Yeah. I'm going. Point, <laughs> I'm going. Like, I'm yeah, like, I'm yeah. going. And I'm not going to feel sorry, you know, because they always say, uh, how are you giving back? to your community. And I'm like, you know what I did for five and a half years? I gave 22,000 inspiration videos, 22,000. I have bi bipolar disorder. I'm type one. So I have a whole lot of energy. I gave yeah. 
content, like content, 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 content. And it's just like, I remember my vocal coach at one point um, when I was going to sign to a major record label that shall remain nameless because I walked away because I want to own me. Um, my vocal coach, I, I kept my vocal coach and I was complaining because I'm like, okay, I'm a gay man. Like I'm supposed to be, you know, the gays are supposed to be supporting me and black women are supporting me. And I was leery of that because black women support gay men to a point. When I first started, I didn't look like this. So I wasn't competition. They didn't see me as a threat. Now it's like, like, and I was like, and I said to my vocal coach, I'm like, listen, I, I'm not trying to get caught up by this fork, you know, because the fork has a dull side and then the fork has the four prongs. So I'm like, I know this. And she, she kind of reprimanded me. She was like, listen, if the black women are supporting you, you go where you, you, you go where you fit in. But now, <laughs> now that I am who I am and they like, they find out, oh, you a singer and you this and you that, it's a little different. But like you said, it shouldn't be, woe is me. You have to get your head together and figure out how to get around it. And I, no. I think Europe, Europe is my way around it. Yeah, I like, and that's the thing. I, you know, for so long, I wanted a career on the internet because I just, this is a safe space. And I created this safe space for me. You know, I tell people, I don't leave my house like this. I'm too afraid to. I don't go out like this. This is me for me. And I had a very famous um, beauty guru. I was talking to him the other day and he's like, well, we want to see this character that you created. And I'm like, no, you don't. First of all, you didn't support it here. But then on top of that, there's a lot of uh, negativism that happens for men like me. And I'm not trying to get you know hurt or harmed. I'm 39 years old. I'm just trying to do what I do. You know, when, right. even when I went to Paris, they were like 15 years, my life could have been different 15 years ago. They're like, I get to Paris and they're like, you know, your body is very long, very lean. You've got curves. They're like, you should be doing the women's fashion. But coming out of the church at that time and my family and she was like, no, 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 yeah, I was like, oh, no, man, no, I ain't no. doing that. Yeah, now, only, now, only now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now thinking the back, you like, damn, I should have did that shit. Yeah. <laughs> right, but but yeah, I but Lee, shit. I get a second chance. I get a second chance. Thank God at 39, I got a second chance. Well, and I don't you. look, you know, black. Yeah, don't, I crack. don't look 39. Yeah, so, you know. you know, listen, black don't crack. We both look good. So I'm just like, all right, all right. But yeah, it just it it's so it's so odd to me how it how it goes because even on my platform. I try not to get into it with people because I'm one of those people where I was I was so thankful to have the people finally acknowledging me that I would say thank you to every single person. Every single person that wrote me, I would say thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting. That's how I started. And I continued that. And you know, you get the, I don't even allow the negative on my on my posts or anything and I'm always there and that's another thing people don't realize you created the the uh, the, the, the um post and you wait you post it five hours of your life and then you're there doing the maintenance making sure the platform is clean making sure you come in uh, that's, making that's sure. something I gotta do man that's something I gotta do next next year I'm telling you like I feel yeah. like I used to I feel like growing up in the hood I used, mm -hmm. I used to look at it like man me blocking somebody or me reporting somebody that's some snitching ass sucker shit. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm realizing now with almost two million followers all yep. together, it's like, yep. man, I really gotta look at it differently because mm -hmm. this troll right here. Yeah. If I say something to him or I respond to him, they're gonna be the one that's gonna be mass reporting my page. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So shit, you might need to go on and block them. Yeah. Or when they say something to you, you report them first for, for you for, for they report you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your, so it's really dread. forcing you to really look at your values and stand. It's your dread. I can't have your uh, dread messed up. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I can't I <laughs> yeah. can't let you go out like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. not gonna yeah. let you go appreciate out like that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You supposed to like, what, huh? What? 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 Yeah, <laughs> my head. But uh, this is what I'm, this is what I'm learning though. I'm, I'm learning yeah. that you gotta really protect your peace. You I'm do. learning that you really gotta know how to use that black button. Yeah. 
I'm learning that, you know what I'm saying? It ain't necessarily got to be with everybody you disagree with mm-hmm. because it's going to be impossible to do that. But you definitely got to have some type of decorum mm-hmm. because if not, you know what I'm saying, you're going you're gonna to spend blood, sweat, and tears into making a platform and then yeah. some old hating ass bigot mm-hmm. or you feel me? It, or she could be a person that look like you. They ain't even got to mm-hmm. be, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a person that's, that, that's, that's, that's not of color. that can look like you. Yeah. And they want to take down what you didn't build, you know what I'm saying? So it's really mm-hmm. you being able to come up with proactive ways of dealing with those situations and those type of people to make it where you don't deal with the backlash of losing your platform or mm-hmm. being you feel me putting facebook jail or making it where you can't post a comment or go live on yeah. instagram so it's like you gotta you gotta do what it is because like you can't make it where you get so irritated some stranger ass person that you don't know and never you would you wouldn't you wouldn't know if you seen it in real life you feel me they can't be the reason why you pissed off going 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 hard or be the reason why you know what i'm saying you didn't spend 10 years building the platform and then you said something to one person one time yeah and your platform is gone so yeah. just like really making like that's what i mean by that balance like yeah you know, you instagram really instagram wrote me so many times and said to me you're in jeopardy of losing your platform we're going to take your platform man I'm, I'm like i'm literally dealing with it right now where it's like like literally today i think it's i think today too it was like i had me a. a mm-hmm. Um, if I, somebody, somebody called me. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. I always, I always <laughs> get the phone calls. I, always, I never, nobody never really called when I ain't doing nothing. When I hop right. on the house, you know, I put it on do not disturb. Yeah, what? Well, uh, yeah, I definitely. I, I, I tell myself, I tell myself, yeah. I don't use, utilize that mode. Yeah, yeah do, I, not but, 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 do not disturb. Do not disturb. What is it? It's a, it's a little moon. If you go in this, I forget where it is. If you go in the settings, if it's not on your. All right, yeah, focus. Bam. Okay, yeah, focus. Like That's do not it. disturb. Got it done. Yeah. 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 Um. But, but yeah. I had I had I had lost my monetization and my badges and all that right. from 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 like bullying and hate. You feel me? Like you know what I mean? You said to yourself like I ain't never seen you be discriminatory or be a person. Right. Like but like let these white folks tell it. Yeah, I, I hate white people and I don't and, and, and I do and stuff that's, not that, the case, that's Lee. oppressive. It's like that's not the case. But I was supposed to gain like monetization and ads and all that December twenty seventh. 2021 yeah i wake up this morning i'm like all right i'm gonna go to my monetization my in business part on instagram i'm gonna see if it say my monetization back it say still say not supposed to get it back until december 27th 2021 so i go to a random i go to a random old long post because you know you know they they, you know, they, they did their whole rebranding thing where it was called IGTV. Now they ain't called yeah. that no more. But you know the longer videos. I yeah. go the longer videos. I go see if they make it where I can go like monetize it. Like if I can like right. add ads to it, it still right. say ineligible. So then I go back <sighs> to the thing and I'm like, damn, today the 27th. So it's like, so is it, if it say until the 27th, that mean I can't post to the 28th. Uh, you know, so because I mean I, I can post. But it's like shit, like 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 we talked about. We we, yeah. we spend a lot of time and energy yeah. on making free content. Yeah. If there is a way for us to make content and get paid for that, then yeah. we're gonna we gonna we gonna try to get paid for the content. Yeah. So it's like literally where I'm sitting on five, six crazy, crazy ideas that I know are gonna be yeah. good. But it's like I ain't gonna put them out until shit. I keep this monetized content back. Right. Man, and you know what? Say, me and my wife then. Mm-hmm. You, said, right, what? you and your wife. No, you and your wife. Go yeah, ahead. me and my wife then got tipped this morning, drunk us some mimosas and shit. I'm thinking like, man, I'm already really irritated. Like, man, I'm just gonna spend some time with the wife. Yeah. Maybe today will be another like self care day where I ain't gonna worry about you feel me posting and shit. I'm just gonna you know I'm, I'm gonna chill with the wife and watch some movie this that, and the other. So really, I feel like my wife really uh, helped me out. I really had I really was sleep. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I was sleep. She's like, baby, get up. You know you're gonna be mad. You probably ain't even productive. I mean, perfectly in time, you know what I'm saying, if I talk right now. Yeah. But it's like, when we get done with this, I'm going to get back on the app and see, like. Yeah. Because I, I know how Facebook works. It'll be like, if you get, if you if you, if you you do a, a community guideline violation, they want to yeah. send you to quote unquote Facebook jail. Yeah. You don't go to Facebook. Like, the, the time of you being in Facebook jail, it doesn't start until you acknowledge it. So yes. it's like, right now, let's say, let's say, like, right now, it's 240 yeah. Central Time. You feel yeah. me? Even though I made the violation two days ago, yeah, but I ain't been on Facebook in two days, yeah, they not gonna start my clock in terms of me dealing with being, you know, upset, yeah, reprimanded the violations until mm-hmm. I see the shit, yeah. So it's literally not gonna start until two fifty, two forty. So it's like now I'm thinking like, so did I not realize that I was 
reprimanded on IG until mm. later in the day and not the morning. So now it's like now me speculating, figuring out like, damn, did me I direct another community guideline and that made it where it's longer, but it didn't change the date. So now it's like me now here sitting, speculating, trying to figure out, is it going to be sometime on December 27th that I get the monetization back or do I get it back tomorrow? You know what, though? I, I don't even have this. You have something that even I don't have. Lee, you are well known. So get this. Say something happened. And I'm just saying hypothetical here. If something happened and you jumped right back on social, social media, your following, as long as the name was similar to what you had, you get it right. Like people like you, you guys speak and you say it's more than being an influencer. You guys set the tone for conversation. So people remember that. Like you, like you said, you got people like, okay, well, this happened. Let me go see what Lisa. And, yeah. and that's the thing. <laughs> like that's the thing, you know. So you've got that. Even I don't like sometimes things will happen and I'll like I noticed that people were following me around social media to see my comments. They wanted to see, they wanted to see more than 60 seconds. So I realized that. So now I'm like, okay, well, let me see how I can use this. But with you, you don't have to worry about that because literally people are going to come looking for you. The bad and the good, they're going to come looking for you. It, it's unfortunate, but the thing about it is social media needs you social media needs yeah. you. yeah i think i think it was something that i think that sometimes it can be discouraging because you know how shadow banning mm-hmm. works mm-hmm. i've been shadow banned being, being, being suppressed and all that shit mm-hmm. so it'd be discouraging because again you can spend that my hours on making the content and then mm-hmm. the 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 engagement the content got or the views the content got is like not like that right right there with yeah I know that because I haven't posted in four or five days and people are not used to me. I'm used to, I used to, I usually post a couple of times a day. Yeah. So because I haven't posted in a couple of days, you know, when you go on your stories, it, it shows you, it tells yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? How many people view in your story? Yeah. Usually on the average, you feel me, even though I got over 200,000 followers, yeah. I get about 3,000 people that view my story. Mm-hmm. They're looking for you, Lee. They're looking story. for you. They looking for you. I ain't posted in four days. Yeah, though. they looking for you. Even yeah, I did. I Even I did. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, wait story a minute. last night, this yeah. morning, I had 14,000 people that viewed my story. Yes. So they're like, God damn, where y'all at when I posted my story? <laughs> right. Promoting advertisers for class. Right. Like, where y'all at? Like, well, I'm used to 3,000 people be there. It's like literally 14,000 people view my story. Right. So it's like, okay, okay. That's the reason why I'm trying to see, like, man, because, like, like literally, I'm sitting on some, like, I'm talking about, I know because I'm married to, you feel me, a, a biracial woman. Yes. Colorism is usually a topic people come to me about, or they wait yes. for me to talk about, or they love me to give on them. Yes. I came across some some content about colorism that I would, like, you know what I'm saying, that I want to, like, make a video about. You feel yes. me? And, of course, it's going to be a longer video because mm-hmm. it's colorism. It's a complex yeah. issue. Yeah. Of course, I'm trying to wait until I get my monetization back. You feel right. me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit, you want your coin. Time. You want your yeah, coin. Yeah. So Hell yeah. I'm really sitting back like, man, when is they going to give me this, man? Because they playing with me right now. But you, but, know, you know, I think I think we had a conversation about that too. And and like I said, when I said, there's no degree you can get in entertainment. So, yeah, like, no. you know, so I think we even spoke about it. And I'm like, there is an interface to Instagram and Facebook where PR professionals that, that, you know, work with these stars and work with this and work with that, they can get into that we can't get into. And I used to be so upset because they finally launched, um, they launched an Instagram business like concierge service. Child, Lee, I was on that damn concierge service every day talking to somebody like, listen, people keep reporting my stuff and I'm losing my, you know, I'm losing my privileges. I'm losing this X, Y, and Z. And they're saying to me, and this was the thing. They said to me, well, do you have screenshots of the, of the hate or screenshots of it happening? Hey, hey, because I've been in the content creator game, how long I've been. When the when the when the white dudes is taunting me and telling me you dumb nigger this that and the other this that and the other Quick. I'm screenshotting <laughs> yes. it. I'm, screen rec- I'm screenshotting because I'm knowing like man in the world that I live in yeah they automatically because I'm talking about what I'm talking about I'm damn near you know what I'm saying like I guess trigger warning I'm damn near like a rape victim yeah you know I mean? it's like you're not finna yeah. respect you're not finna you're not finna yeah 
you're not going to listen to or believe anything I say. The burden right. of proof is on me. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And I know when it comes to being on social media, talking about mass reporting or being suppressed or anything, the burden of proof is on you to prove. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah, I knew to get there. And so I hate to use, I guess, a, a, a rape metaphor to try to give point to me. And you know, no, you know I'm saying, so I, I shouldn't right. say that. But you get what no, I'm, you, you get what you I'm getting. You use the right. Though. No, you use the you right. You get thing. what I'm getting at, though. You no, feel but me? you did like, use man, that. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna believe me. I gotta, I gotta go through hell and hell and high water to even get y'all to believe what I got going on. Yeah. So literally, I'm screen recording. I mean, screenshotting it, but it's lucky that I'm thinking like, what if these dumbass people didn't have the 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 the, the gall and balls to come into my DMs and tell me they was the ones that did? I wouldn't even have this proof. But of course, mm -hmm. I got the proof now. But it's just like I don't know what that means. And then me thinking about like you know, the 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 the, the world becoming more depending on the internet, what that means for black people, what that means yeah. for black gay people, what that means for black trans people, what that means for black fat people, what that means for black disabled people, what that means for indigenous people, what that means for oppressed peoples across the board. Cause it's like shit, abuse are already running rampant. Yeah. Y'all already having a hard time. This white person called me out my name and, and literally called me a monkey. Yeah. That wasn't seen as being the community guidelines. How right. I responded to being called a monkey was behind, but was 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 against the community guidelines. Right. That sounds a lot like you feel me. Some shit yeah. that I read about when I was an undergraduate, getting my undergraduate degree. When I was getting right. my degree in African African American studies, and I was learning about political, social, ec economic implications of being black. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. You feel me? White man can do whatever he say want to to me, and when I respond, I better respond and give it with with, with, with due diligence. Yeah, that's not a word I want to live in. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But slowly but surely, it's becoming, or it is the world that I'm living in, and it's not going nowhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the thing I'm really worried about. Like, hey, on Instagram right now, I'm I'm blocking the motherfucker. The person I'm blocking them. You feel me? I'm blocking them. You feel me? Like really. He did something. To, he 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 must say something on 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 uh, on, uh, on to me on Facebook. I blocked him. Somehow he was able to still report something on my page. So he hit me in the inbox like, "Yeah, dumb nigger, I got the shit blocked. I'm gonna take down your you you know what I mean. I'm gonna I'm gonna take down your your Facebook platform, nigger. You gonna just that and the other, that and the other. You feel me? You're like, God damn, I block this person. So I block him. He come he she, he come find me on Instagram. I block him again. Can find me on a different, different Instagram page. I blocked him again. Literally five minutes after blocking him, come an email. So at this point, like, God damn, bro, yeah. if you if, if 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 you saying that you got me banned, why is you harassing me about it? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. In actuality, it's like, bro, you didn't get me banned. You got me. You got me putting Facebook there for 24 hours. Congratulations. Yeah, but I can post again. It's you infatuation. It's infatuation. When right. I was uh, in 2009, I had the privilege of working as a female phone sex agent at a organization for two years. My boss, she's now passed, she passed, but she, she had been in the business for 25 years. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because she had a master's in psychology. So she yeah. explained to us you know, the fact that a lot of these men were calling with trauma, a lot of these men were calling with infatuation, what they wanted. Lee, one of the number one calls in my call center was for Black men. Yeah. And, yeah, and these were, and get it, these were quote unquote straight white men. And they're calling, they would, they would call, they wanted a, a, a fantasy girl. They wanted a black fantasy girl and the fantasy would always go your brother your cousin your uncle oh, no. always go that way and listening to that i realized and that's actually what helped me launch my career without being afraid because i realized deep down it didn't matter how much hate i amassed or came my way y'all wanted me they wanted me and I realized that. And when somebody is willing to do that or, and follow you from page to page to page to page, that's infatuation. They're infatuated with you. And it, it's so crazy because they say hate is the highest form of love. They say that hate is the highest form of love. They won't leave you alone. If somebody like the fact that they could even muster up hate, hate comes from love. 
And it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, hey, the great philosopher Drake, what he said, hate is just love and jealousy at the same time. Yes. See, but what I know though about it and, and having my degrees and having my knowledge and expertise mm -hmm. is that when you in it from a black liberation standpoint, when yeah. you, you feel me, a black man standing unapologetically. Like, don't get me wrong, you feel me, that, 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 you know what I'm saying, that hate can be, you feel me, I can, I can think about it very complex in terms of how it's, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, love is disguised, but it can mm -hmm. be very insidious. Yeah. It's very parasitic, mm -hmm. very, very dangerous, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, shit, really being able to position and account for that hate in ways that make it where it's conducive to what I got going on and not deconstructive to what I got going on, you know what I'm saying, that's, I feel like that's, that, that's usually the challenge. Yeah. And my thing is, but you know what? At the end of the day, we're going to be all right. We gonna be yeah, all right. At the end of the day, it is what it is, man. At the end of the day, we're going to be all right. You yeah. know what I mean? It's all about, you know, what we can do and being all right and how all right we're going to be. Yeah. Or, you know, how, how I think about it is just like, I have a social media following because of the things I do and say. Yes. What I know is that I had a... I was doing, I was doing and saying these things before I had a social media following. The reason why I have a following is because I was saying and doing these things. Yes. Yes. The the focus becomes now that I have the following, what do I continue to say and do? Mm -hmm. Regardless of how much money I'm making, regardless mm -hmm. of how much I'm being fucked over, regardless mm -hmm. of how much my content is being pushed, spread, or suppressed, is literally okay. Now you have people watching you because of what you were saying and you're doing. Are you going to switch up what you're saying and you're doing because folks watching? Or are you going to keep on doing what you're doing? Or are you going to try to, you know what I'm saying? I probably, it's, it's, it's various ways of how to look at it. Yeah. I think that's how it's like, how we end it. Like, it's going to be all right, though. Yeah, it's going to be all right. And the, and the thing about it is the, the ones that are destined for greatness, they stick to their guns. We stick to yeah, our I'm guns. To my, yeah, I'm sticking, yeah, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm sticking to my goddamn guns. I'm sticking to my goddamn guns. I'm sticking to my guns. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. as we wrap up, I have I have to thank you because not only for this time to talk to you, but the fact that you support black and brown people, no matter if they're gay, straight, transgender, yeah. like, and, and that is so, and, and, you know, I've even seen you catch backlash for that, but, but as someone, yes, <laughs> but as, some, yes, but man, as, some, right, crazy, <laughs> right, but Lee, it's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. You're going to be more than all right. 2022 going to be a movie, but still like, I just want to say thank you because, you know, it was actually one of your posts that, I saw where you were like, listen, like these people trying to live their lives. They're not worried about you. Like they're not worried about you. They're trying to get rights. We need rights and this and protections and this and that. And I was just like, <sighs> it was like such a exhale moment. Like it was such an exhale moment. Cause I was like, okay, they're not all bad. They're not all bad. Like, <laughs> I was like, they don't all want to kill us. Like, oh my God. Like, and then like when people would say stuff, I would sit on your video. I would sit on your video. I'm like, no, 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 no. He got kids. He got a wife, a beautiful wife. No, no. Yeah. I, mean, I yeah, I, I think I think what I recognize is a lot of people come to their sexual consciousness in high school, yeah. and they really be having a lot of those immature ways of yeah. how they orient towards sexuality and sex. Yeah. Period. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So when people start trying to talk about some DL shit yeah. or talk about, you know what I'm saying? Just just almost in my mind, anything that can come off as being purposefully, you know what I'm saying? purposefully intentional shade throwing gaslight yeah. sensitive dismissive insulting this is like yeah. hey i'm not the nigga to do that with right <laughs> right right, I that with. <laughs> right. <laughs> thank you so much if you had i know what it's going to be though but i'm going to ask if you had three words to inspire just three words that, that to inspire someone who is you know starting out in the content creation and with education and being black and being different what would those three words look like to to inspire them it could be phrases two sentences it could man be i about to say i really got two of them though i got two mm -hmm. of them though because i really mm -hmm. feel like in order for you to really do anything in this world mm -hmm. you gotta know yourself you gotta yeah. know who you are you gotta know what piss you off you gotta know yeah. what you stand on you gotta know where you come from you gotta know yeah. where you're trying to go you really gotta know what it is that's the reason why i like the 
research over me search. Yeah. Because it's like you gotta understand who you are. But really, you know, um, education is elevation. That's my motto. Yeah. You know I'm saying like if you don't, whatever you don't know. You know, uh, education is going to be one of the things that can help you to it. And you can even be critical of education and thinking about the school to prison pipeline or how different people have been excluded from, you feel me, the, the classroom. Um, education is elevation to me is a quote that, 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 that I feel like you can embody in terms of self-awareness, in terms of political, social, economic education. Yeah. you always try to learn about yourself in the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that self-actualization. Yeah. Um, a quote that I really loved though was Huey P. Newton, not high ended. You feel me? He said that power is the ability to, to find a phenomenon and make it act in a desired manner. Yeah. That's really how I, you feel me, think about the world. I think about, I think about if I can define something, if I can figure out how it works, if I can figure out how it functions, I can then gain power over it and understand how it works and I can make it work for me or make it work for, for me in terms of how I'm going to move around it move to it, navigate through it, go under it, go above it, whatever. It's like, that's how I think about, you know what I'm saying, the world. But yeah, I, I appreciate you. I thank you. And too, when, when you engaging with me in the comment section, <laughs> the way that you encouraging, you feel me? And the way that you, you know what I'm saying? I think that be like, I think, I think the way that you are engaging and encouraging goes way far than you know. Mm -hmm. Like being real goes way thank further you. than you know. Thank so you. I, I definitely thank you for the support and the engagement. Thank I'm forever you. grateful. Yes, thank you. Tell us, but we we already know. But tell everybody where they can find you on social media. Hey, the consciously where you can find me on social media, theconsciously.com. I have an online class right now yep. about identity politics, yep. uh, race, class, gender, ability, sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, getting into you know a little brief history about all these different um, I guess types of oppression. Um, thinking about different strategies and methods to be able to deal with it. You know what I mean? Where we can become better allies, better advocates, you know what I'm saying? The consciously.com, where you can go and find more, more information about Conscious University. Um, and I have more online classes coming soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the vocal stylings of the consciously. <laughs> Say <Hey>. bye. <laughs> Don't go away though. <laughs> yeah.